everyone, it's Ivan with KipAdger.com here today to kind of reflect and wrap up on my experience in the Tactical Games over the last year. What is the Tactical Games? Probably a good place to start. If you're unfamiliar, think of kind of a cross between a CrossFit competition and a two-gun competition. So physically demanding tasks coupled with shooting pistol and rifle. Tim is the founder. He started CrossFit Games after spending a career in Special Forces in the Army and basically brought it to market. The first one I did not attend. It was basically invitational. And then I attended the first one in, I believe it was October maybe, North Carolina, 2018 it would be. And that was kind of the first one actually open to the public. After attending that one, I, the next year, 2019, I ended up going to Mississippi, Texas, I think I missed Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and finally down in Florida, wrapping up 2019 in November. But through all of those, I definitely have some takeaways from the experience. Over this last year, definitely seen it grow a lot. That initial one, it was small. There was like, I don't know, maybe 30 competitors there, three divisions, and fast forward a year later, Florida 2019, and you have four divisions and I don't know, probably a good 150, 250 competitors, like a significant amount of competitors. And it's definitely came a long ways from that first one, like, in fairness, the first one is like the quintessential military experience for like a field exercise. Nobody really knows what time they are supposed to show up and then you show up like bad dissemination of information, timelines get totally blown, no logistics, like no water for competitors, no food anywhere around, like closest thing was a gas station like 15 minutes away, long-winded speeches by company first sergeant with bad jokes quintessential military experience from that it's actually gotten a lot better logistics have gotten better they now have like water for everyone at the events huge bonus and information's gotten a lot better too as far as disseminating information social media presence actually is now a thing and has been pushed largely in part to sarah who came on board she's done an amazing job with it and no, it's, it's absolutely grown and gotten better and kind of more refined along the way. Across the last year, I've, like I said, seen things improve and I've seen other things just kind of not really change much. One of the things is kind of stage design. The first three of them I went to, I was actually showing up. I was like, oh, cool. Like, let's go compete. Like, this would be pretty fun. And... It was, it was pretty fun. Like I, I enjoyed kind of that competition aspect of it. But as I continued to go to them, the stage design was always kind of the same. It was almost like a six sided dice that had like, I don't know, sled drag, farmer's carry, rope climb, 50 yard pistol shot, 25 yard pistol, like whatever it is. And they just roll them a couple different times and be like, all right, we're gonna go do this now. And to the end of a shooting competition, it's kind of much more of like a shooting qual. Like a lot of the stuff is static and not super dynamic as far as whether it's movement with shooting. And part of it is limitations based on how the stages are run and stuff. But I mean, even just positional shooting, like not really a thing. Or it'll kind of be micromanaged to the point like, hey, you need to do this rather than hey, shoot around the side of this barricade or shoot through these different ports, like however you get it done. And it's like, you need to do this rather than letting people basically self-discover and figure out what works for them. With that also, you'll kind of have some wild stuff too. Like a lot of the shooting will be really vanilla. And then it's like, okay, with your support hand only, draw out your pistol, conduct a reload with it, shoot, conduct another reload with it and shoot again all with your support hand which that's fine like I've I've trained that before it's not something totally foreign but it's like such a crazy departure from all of the other stuff and honestly a lot of the people especially in intermediate 
skill level is probably not really there. And so, yeah, like it's kind of wild, kind of the fluctuation with some of the shooting with respect to stage design. Over the past year, something that has unfortunately been a common theme is things just running late. Like the events getting stacked up, some sort of bottleneck, and then pretty soon all the timelines getting pushed back. And like sometimes really far back. By way of example, in South Carolina, I think at one point we were waiting like five or six hours between events, between battles. And so there you are competing, pushing yourself really hard. You just warmed up, going like redlining, and then like, all right, probably about five hours from now, you're gonna go compete again in the next event. And I think in South Carolina, like the high water mark for that, the women's division, like they only got through one of three battles on that first day, which that's a bummer. Like spend a lot of time and money to get out there. And I think that was kind of an eye opener where it's like, okay, we should probably like actually pre-run these stages beforehand so we know how long they're gonna take. And then implement like cutoff times so that if people are running too long, like, all right, sorry, like you're not able to compete this or complete this and we need to cut you off so that things can progress and run smoothly for the entire event. Unfortunately, the one after that, North Carolina, again, everything got pushed back, ran late. Florida, again, everything got pushed back, run late, like consistently. And hopefully moving forward, some of that stuff will be addressed, but the time element as far as planning, scheduling, all that stuff, like it's definitely has and continues to be a rocky road. For me, as I've kind of mentioned, two of the biggest things that were, I don't know, kind of got boring after the first couple ones, I was just like, okay, is course design, like pretty vanilla. Like you're gonna do rope climbs, you're gonna do some sort of drag, farmer's carry, and the shooting, like pretty much all static, like never shooting off your support side, never like really, doing any like legitimate positional shooting from behind barricades or anything like that. And on top of that, that huge time element, like huge spaces of time in between events. And so like, well, why did I keep going? Well, because it's still fun. Like I was still having fun. And what made it fun, like, wasn't necessarily an event after the first couple because it's like, oh, you know what the tactical games is going to be like? It's going to be like the last one. Like, do you know what day two is going to be like? It's probably going to be a watered down version of day one. But what actually was continuously fun is the way it was structured in that a lot of games you or yeah, a lot of shooting competitions you go to have way better course design with respect to the actual shooting portion, like way better but you're also just running by yourself. So there are limitations, obviously, when you're running five people abreast, like up to a line. I mean, there's absolutely a lot of other ways you can do it, but it can be a limitation as far as movement and stuff like that. But that is also where a lot of the fun comes in, like being able to kind of sled dog and have someone next to you that's pushing you because you see them coming up behind you or maybe they're in front of you and you're trying to catch up to them. And that aspect and just the people I've met and the people I've got to compete with, like that has continuously been fun throughout the entire experience, throughout all the different games I've been to. Like that absolutely is the fun part for me. Right now you guys are probably like, damn, like why are you crapping all over the tactical games? Don't get me wrong. And this isn't me like just venting. I've actually brought up all kinds of constructive criticism. So have a lot of other people because really want to see it succeed. But largely it's fallen on deaf ears. The reason I bring all this up is because every time I go there, I run into people that come up to me and they're like, hey man, really appreciate your content. It's how I learned about the tactical games. It's why I'm out here. Uh, like gear selection really helped a lot, all this stuff. And which is awesome. Like I really enjoy meeting all those people. And at the same time with apprehension, I'm like, uh, like cool. Like 
are you having a good time? And almost always they're like, yeah, man, I'm having a blast out here, which I'm super stoked on. But where I'm at with it is I largely, like in good faith, have been going to all these, creating content, having fun at them mostly, and creating this content and yeah, being like, hey, this is really fun. Like, come on out and try this in good faith that a lot of these things will end up getting fixed because like, oh, you know, we're going to work on that. It's going to be better next time. Like, I don't know, man, like fool me six times. Shame on you. Fool me seven times. Shame on me. Like I've been like six of these now, I think, and seen a lot of the same things. And like, this isn't me trying to slam the games. This is me trying to be totally transparent and honest. Because if you come from a competition background to the games, you'd be like, this is terribly run. Like this is not well run at all. Versus if you come and this is your first experience, you're gonna be like, this is amazing. Like I'm having a blast. You're gonna meet a bunch of really cool people into all the same stuff you are. You're gonna have a ton of fun, like you will. But I want people, since people are making decisions based on videos that I put out, when someone goes and drops like 1500, 2000 bucks on a weekend, like I want you to know what you're getting into. I will say I have it on good authority from a buddy of mine who is really invested and really wants to see this succeed that they are bringing on some people to hopefully iron all of that stuff out that I mentioned to include someone that's going to come on board that actually knows about and how to use practice score in charge of all the scoring. Why is that important? Because through every single one of these scoring has been a problem. Like problems have come up. After the fact, you'll have people move all over the board, like with respect to scoring. The last one in Florida, 2019, I went from 11th place in elite down to 19th place. Did it matter? No, I didn't care. Like, I was running in a tracksuit with an AK, like drawing a pistol out of a leather fanny pack holster. Like I was there to have fun, obviously. But you also had people that went up front in front of everyone and collected a first place trophy, picked out a prize and well, like actually you didn't get first place or other people that didn't end up getting recognized in front of everyone for all of their hard work because the scores were miscalculated. And so, yeah, like, Oh, sorry about that. Like we're going to ship your trophy to you. And it's like, okay, cool, I guess. And yeah, no scoring has been a big issue. And so supposedly someone's going to come on board with that. And someone also that is really good coming over from the three gun world, going to come in and kind of help with stage design, like make it, make it better, make it fun, make it more dynamic, which I think if they're able to do that, that would be amazing. I'm, They've been working on that stuff for the last year though, like all the games I've gone to. If they do that though, I think it will take it to the next level. Having said all of these things, should you go compete in the CrossFit games? Yeah, probably. I think you probably would have a lot of fun. You, if nothing else, will probably meet some really awesome people and may very well forge lifelong friendships. Like it's fun, like it is. Like just the group of people that you're there with, all the other people, like, it's fun. Everyone's like-minded. I mean, to show up, you have to be able to table your ego to a certain point. Like, everyone's out there ready to get humbled. And if you're not, like, you will get humbled. Like, nobody cares how special you were in the military or law enforcement or whatever. Like, you'll probably go get crushed. So, yeah, show up. Have fun. Should you train for it? You could. I mean, it's like... I'm going to go do CrossFit so I can compete in the CrossFit games. Like you could train for the tactical games so you can be good at the tactical games. Personally, I think it's kind of defeating the point. Like I would rather spend time in the gym doing whatever it is I'm doing. And I would rather spend time on the range doing whatever it is I'm doing and use the tactical games more as a litmus test or a yardstick to see where I am with respect to competency in weapons, shooting, manipulation, all that stuff, as well as physical fitness. But if you want to train specifically for it, like train for it. If nothing else, I would say train for rope climbs, otherwise train some burpees. 
you are going to compete, what class should you go compete in? Well, apparently they're introducing a new class, which is light. I think it's stupid. I think if you're going to go compete, if you are a female, go compete in women's division. Really awesome, close-knit group, like super supportive. The women's division is really cool. Like, go compete there. Everyone is really cool in that division. If you are not a woman, what do you compete in? Well, if you are military or law enforcement, you compete in elite. End of story. People are counting on you to be proficient with your weapons as well as physically fit. If you can't go compete in elite, like, I don't know, maybe have a come to Jesus talk and reconsider your profession. Like, people are counting on you. Live up to it. If you want to compete, go to elite. Like, that's where the competition is. If you just want to show up and have fun, which I totally endorse, I think you should, and you're not military or law enforcement, go in intermediate. Like, go have fun with it. What about if you're old? If you want to compete, you go in elite. If you don't want to compete and just have fun, you go in intermediate. What about master's division? No, it's a participation trophy. Like, where is the 41 and a half year old division for people that are between 5'10 and 6 foot? Because I would probably crush that. No, if you want to be competitive and you want to compete, you go in elite. Or if you want to have fun, just go in, go in intermediate, man. If you're that broken, hang up the spurs. Like, whatever. Go have fun in intermediate. Supposedly, they're introducing some sort of, like, light division where you can essentially skip obstacles, stuff like that. It's already there. It's called intermediate, and you just do burpees. Like, if you can't do something, do your burpees, move on, whatever. Elite, military and law enforcement, and anyone that wants to compete, or if you just want to go have fun, go in intermediate. Really, it's pretty much binary. And if you are military and law enforcement, maybe a full-time SWAT officer, and you go compete in intermediate, and then high-five everyone around you because you did good, people will probably make fun of you for that. Where does all this leave me? Well, I'm, uh, I'm stepping back from it. I think I'm done with it for a while. I will probably keep, keep tabs, see if, uh, see if they turn a corner, see if uh, things really turn around as far as course design, scoring, stuff like that, which I think would be great. Like, I really want to see them succeed. But, yeah, fool me six times, not going to fool me seven times. I don't know. Hopefully these next ones over this next year in 2020 totally turn it around. It'll get really ironed out, super smooth, which would be really cool. In which case, I may very well end up coming back and, uh, yeah, going to compete. I will say, if you want to go compete, don't put roadblocks in front of yourself. Like, physical fitness. Like, no. If you can't do something, like, do burpees. Anyone can do a burpee. You just lay down and then you stand back up. Like, that's pretty much it. You might end up doing a lot of them, but you can do it. And as far as shooting, yeah, none of it's crazy. Like safe weapon handling skills, you'll be good to go. Gear, dude, don't overthink that, man. Like I ran that stuff with iron sights with like retro rifles, ran it in track suits, I've drawn magazines out of duffel bags. Like it doesn't matter. Like it's the Indian, not the arrow. Don't put little roadblocks in front of yourself. If you want to go compete, go do it. You'll probably have a lot of fun. Personally, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably check out some other stuff. Most recently, or coming up rather, is Desert Brutality in 2020. Looking forward to that. In part, basically just the way the divisions are broken down. Like one, you can pretty much shoot anything. Like they have a classic division. Like you can run M1 Grand. Retro division, you can run all kinds of different stuff like old school m16 stuff like that and then they have like an armored division as well as a scout division and i think just yeah way more refined as far as rules course of fire divisions and stuff like that versus tactical games like the divisions are pretty much like a crossfit competition like you have rx and you have scaled and you have women's and masters which isn't really how shooting competitions usually get broken up but 
you want to do it, please do it. And yeah, you'll probably have a good time out there. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.